Hello everyone. Before we get started, I'm going to answer a few questions that have been sent to me from subscribers to this channel. The first one is what kind of tools do you use when you're not doing uh, with the pencils and the manicure stylus? And what I use are these. These are tools that are made from uh, large nails and bolts and then they're set inside a wooden handle and they come in nine different sizes and I got them from Traveling Kindness Rocks. Uh, this is a wonderful resource for anybody who's interested in this type of art. Ginger has these tools for sale. You can uh, go to her website and order them. Uh, she also has these wonderful calendars with uh, beautiful pictures of rocks painted in the Dadaism design and then she also has um, uh, other products you can buy, sweatshirts, uh, tote bags, all sorts of stuff and she's um, getting into doing classes and live streaming too. So go contact Gretchen at Traveling Kindness Rocks and get a set of these tools because our project today I'm going to be using these exclusively and you're going to see how wonderful they are because each tool uh, in these varying sizes you can make one dot fit inside another dot perfectly and you'll always get great results because it's a very consistent size. Now other artists like Elspeth McLean can do this just with a paintbrush and I haven't mastered that yet so um, I'm relying on these tools and they're just a wonderful product. Uh, another question people had uh, was where do I live? Um, I live in Washington State on a farm and we do not uh, raise animals to eat or anything like that. We have uh, an animal rescue farm. We, um, I have five children and we take in, over the years we've taken in so many different types of animals, usually old animals or um, animals for people who have, who have gone through divorce or um, maybe a, a foreclosure or they've lost a job or whatever and they need some place to drop off their animals. So we've had uh, goats and ponies and llamas and alpacas and chickens and turkeys and geese and uh, all sorts of things. Uh, so we live here in Washington on our little farm and um, it's been snowing <laughs> but I felt like I needed to do something in spring green today and I love to garden and I saw this picture online of this bowl of uh, succulent plants and I thought that would make a really cool mandala so that's what we're going to paint today. And I'm going to show you a little trick I learned in getting perfect circles on a larger canvas. These are my old embroidery hoops. I used to do a lot of cross stitch and quilting. And um, I use these hoops uh, to get a perfect circle. And I'll show you how to do that on the canvas. I started with a 12 by 12 canvas painted with matte black paint and then I offset my embroidery hoops so it would be a little bit more interesting design this time. After tracing around the circles, I just found the center of the smallest circle and that gave me the placement for my first dot. I mixed up the colors that seemed to go with the design that I found on the garden website and started out. I'm starting out with 16 dots around the center dot and I'll be offsetting each row. The first two rows are in the same color as the center dot and then the next row is in more of a lime green and I used the smallest dotting tool for that row. The other two interior rows were done with the manicure stylus. Then a quick shot with the blow dryer and I'm ready for the fourth row. I'm going to wipe all my tools off on a damp paper towel. I'm going up another size on my dotting tools. And you'll see how this just continues out. I'm offsetting each row and I'm adding a little bit of white to my green colors and just continuing to work my way out to the edge of the first circle.
unlike other types of painting, mandala dotalism uh, is somewhat narrow in its parameters because you're painting with dots and you're confined to circular patterns. So you think this would get repetitive and boring in a short amount of time, but I find it exciting because I never really know how it's going to turn out. I'm walking the dots now around the outside edge, right where that first circle ends. So instead of um, trying to copy a, a landscape or create a recognizable portrait in painting, I'm working my way outward from a single dot of paint and making it up as I go. Uh, in many ways, it's like turning a kaleidoscope because the color choices and the placement determine the design and it can change the whole look in an instant depending on the size of dot that I use or the color placement. It could, it could turn into something wonderful or it could be an uninviting mess. I've tossed my fair share of failed canvases and scrubbed rocks that I've already put about an hour's worth of work into, so it's always a surprise. Now that I've completed that interior color with the pale blue and the pale green, I'm starting on a brighter spring green around that. Again, just moving up in size with my tools. And I often will give the canvas a tap so the paint will pool out and flatten somewhat, especially if I know I'm going to be going back and adding another color on top of that after it's dried. Now I'm sort of measuring here with my largest tool. This is uh, a little tricky. I wanted to make sure I had enough space I wanted to do uh, an outer rim in the chartreuse, but I wanted to make sure I had enough space to use the largest dotting tool within that parameter. And I just didn't want the edges to touch and bleed into each other. So I kind of made sure I had room. And then I did the outside circle and went back with the large tool and then filled in those spaces. Again, giving it a good tap so the paint flattens out. Now I went ahead and let that dry and when I tried to go back and add some white dots I made a little mistake so I've got my pointy q-tip and I'm cleaning up that mistake and then I can continue on. Going in and filling some of the spaces between the larger dots with a turquoise. Again, I'm just making it up as I go. I just keep drying it with the blow dryer. Sometimes I'll hang it up on the wall and look at it for a while. And then just come back and fill in the spaces with something that I think is visually interesting. Now I'm measuring here just with the edge of the tool. I wanted to start another row on the outside and I decided to line it up with the smallest green dot within that first circle. And then I am going around each one of those dots with a row of eight. Now that my interior is dry, I decided to go back and add this vibrant purple, this fuchsia, because uh, some of the succulent plants have that color on the edges of their leaves. And while that was drying, I decided to uh, finish off that row and then start filling in the space with a little brighter green. Once again, I measured with my tool and found out that I had enough space, so I decided to do the outer edge of the circle in kind of an emerald green, and then I thought I would walk those dots backwards towards the outer rim, just to give it a little bit of a different shape. 
once I stood back and looked at the mandala for a while, I decided that even though I really liked the fuchsia color with the green because they're complementary, I thought it was a little overpowering for the effect I was going for. I wanted to make sure that green was the dominant color, so I went back and did another dot of a light green on top of that fuchsia. So now it is just uh, a little bit of an edge. give it another quick shot with the blow dryer and continue on with another row this time in more of a, a spring green and I decided that I would go ahead and use some black on the outer edge. I had kind of dripped some paint on it while I was working. I had a lot of fingerprints on it from turning the canvas and I just wanted it to be very clean before I did my last two rows. So I let that dry and now I'm putting on my last row this really pretty metallic olive green. I just happened to have this bottle laying in the bottom of a box and thought I would use it up and ended up really liking it. And instead of walking the dots all the way around these, I thought it looked more plant-like just to have the end of it in a group of three. Just putting a few finishing touches on that outer row. And I let it hang on the wall and dry. And then I went back and added the crystals. I added three shades of green and some clear, just enough to give it a little bit of a shine. I really like how it turned out. You can also use uh, the hoops centered too. I did this rainbow design using the embroidery hoops centered on the canvas. <laughs> 